Hi folks, David Waring here again with InformTrades.com in today's lesson of the day. In our last lesson we looked at the ISM Manufacturing Index, an indicator which gives us insight into an important sector of the economy. In today's lesson we're going to shift our attention away from the indicators we've been, we've been studying up to this point whose primary responsibility uh, is to gauge the level of growth in the economy and towards indicators whose primary responsibility is to gauge the level of price pressures in the economy with a look at the producer's price index. So let's get started. Reported at 8.30 a.m. in the second or third week of the month, the Producer Price Index, or PPI for short, is a measure of the increase or decrease in the selling price received by U.S. producers for their output. Very simply, what this indicator does is measure any price changes from the company side of the equation. While the headline number is a reflection of the change in prices at the producer level over the last month expressed in percentage terms, like many uh, of the other indicators we're studying, the PPI contains many sub-indices which make up the headline number. This increases the importance of the release as it allows market participants to get a look at what is happening not only with overall producer prices but also producer prices by industry. There are currently over 10,000 sub-indices used to compile and release with the report, uh, each of which is giving a, given a weighting depending on the size and importance to the economy. The important thing to realize here is that included in the release is price data on pretty much every product type and industry which makes up the economy. So, you know, you can you can use this not only for an overall reading on what's happening with producer prices in the economy, but, you know, what's happening with uh, prices in specific industries, which is important, obviously, if you're trading stocks from that those industries and uh, as early warning signs on inflation and et cetera. Uh, secondly, the price of goods is tracked at different levels of production, the three categories of which are crude, intermediate, and finished goods. Although numbers for all three are released with the report, when people refer to the PPI, they are normally referring to the finished goods number uh, as this most closely represents uh, the price which will be paid by the end consumer, which is ultimately the determinant of inflationary or non-inflationary pressures in the economy. Lastly, prices for food and energy have much greater short-term volatility than other components of the index, so many market participants and the Fed will often focus on the what's known as the core number, which is the finished goods PPI minus food and energy prices. Uh, while the PPI provides much insight into what's happening with prices, what ultimately determines inflationary pressures in the economy uh, is how much the consumer is paying for goods. Now, it's logical to think that, uh, and, and the majority of time, producer increases in producer prices are eventually passed along to the consumer, but not always. So the real... Um, you know, market moving impact of the producer price index is its sort of predictive power over what's going to be happening with consumer prices. Um, and there is actually an index also known as the consumer price index or CPI for short, which uh, measures uh, the prices that consumer pay that the consumer pays. Um, and and you know we can sort of get a feel for the difference between the two and when uh, pr uh, price increases are passed along to the consumer and when they aren't by looking at that number. Okay, so that's going to be our topic of tomorrow's lesson or our next lesson. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and good luck with your trading.